Well, hello, my name is Jeremy Spry, and I run the YouTube channel and Facebook page, Atheism vs. Logic. And I just wanted to make a video where I just help people that want to help atheists also. And so I just want to share with you some points that I've learned and, um, and, and just some ways of thinking. So first off, I think it's very important for us to communicate to people who don't believe in God or don't believe that Jesus is God, that, that we're open to the evidence, that we just want to follow the evidence. We want to, we want to believe what is right. Um, if there is no creator, I don't want to believe in one. Uh, if Jesus is not our creator, then I don't want to believe in that either. And I certainly don't want to teach my children that. Um, if, if Jesus is not our creator, then I do not want my kids to potentially be missionaries in another country you know, and move away from me, right? If, if there is no God and Jesus is not God, um, you know, I want to spend as much time with them as possible um, before we pass away. Uh, second thing is, uh, we need to understand that the goal of debating is to clarify someone's position uh, and to clarify our position. And so there's something in debating called a straw man. It's where you build up um, an idea of what your opponent is thinking and it's wrong. So uh, let's say, for instance, um, I don't think anyone should drink milk. And that's not the case. But let's just say that's my argument. Um, and then somebody builds a straw man about my argument and they say that, you know, I, I don't believe anyone should drink um, any, um, any liquid at all, right? That's a straw man and easily knocked down. And so what I think this also does is this helps um, put the guard of the other person down. When, when I am conversating with someone, and it's very hard to do because it's easy to be emotional, but when I'm communicating with someone, conversating, and I'm saying, look, I, 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 do I have your position right? And then I can say, well, this is my position, you know, regarding the evidence for a creator. I, I, I can't get myself to believe that code and the machinery that can translate that code uh, could come into existence without a creator involved. I, I respect your right to believe that, but I can't believe that. And so what that does is that sows a seed in their mind of, I help them clarify their position and they're like, holy cow, may, I believe that a machine can make itself and then code and machine that can turn code into more machinery. That's crazy, I don't, I don't believe that. So it could help them change their mind for you to help them clarify what they believe and then clarify what you believe. Uh, atheists are making claims. They try to say they don't, but you know they they claim that in, in order to be an atheist, you have to claim that life could emerge without a intelligence involved. And we're going to look at uh, you know what's going on inside living cells, which I believe is the best argument for a creator. So they are making claims, um, and just help them you know help them see that. Like, are are you claiming that life could arise without a creator? Because you know, and then this is in life. Are you sure you believe that? Uh, atheists are actually usually agnostics. Many like to say that they don't know. So an atheist believes, in, in its truest definition, an atheist believes there is no God. And an ag agnostic says, I don't know if there's a God. A deist, I believe, um, is someone who believes in a creator, but they don't think the creator has any involvement in our life. Uh, but again, I, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I let them uh, define atheism for themselves. I don't think that's really worth arguing about because <clears throat> I'm trying to get them to look at the evidence. Um, so the, the main argument for a creator is the fact that inside every living cell, inside the most simple cell, in, in the bacteria that we consume in, in, in yogurt or kimchi, or the bacteria that we're afraid of like strep, <clears throat> There is genetic code and molecular machines inside every living cell, and that debunks both atheism and agnosticism, right? Um, if, you, if you watch this, um, these are machines. Uh, and we've got Ken Dill. Ken Dill is a respected scientist, and he said they're actual machines. That you, right? The atheists try to say that there's not real code and there's not real machinery, but there absolutely is. And so we just need to show them these these videos. We need to show them this these these short secular videos that show um, scientifically accurate animations of what's going on inside every living cell. Uh, my favorite video to send to people is this one, and um, just just let them just let them see it and and just let them come to their own conclusion. If they don't want to believe in a creator after seeing this amazing complex coordination of molecular machines, then okay, that's on them. Uh, next point, molecular machines inside our cells. So we have eukaryotic cells, bacteria has a prokaryotic cell. Uh, there are machines inside our cells that are not in bacteria. 
Uh, look at these uh, motor proteins and microtubules. A motor protein walks on the microtubule and it's carrying cargo. The microtubule uh, breaks apart and comes together as needed. Uh, this is clearly designed by any logical person and this is not in bacteria. So therefore, if, if it would take a creator to, to create that system of the motor protein and the microtubule and what it's doing and how it's uh, transporting cargo, and that's not in bacteria, well, that debunks the idea that bacteria could evolve into man, right? I, I cannot believe that. I can't be scientifically and logically honest with myself and believe that bacteria could become um, anything with a eukaryotic cell, whether it's a dog, a cat, a tree, uh, and, and certainly not a human. Um, so that debunks that. Uh, Darwinists, people that do believe that, they also need to learn about epigenetics. It involves machinery that turns genes on and off depending on what is necessary for the environment. So when you've got Charles Darwin and he's looking at these finches with different beaks and these different beaks have different purpose, well this is epigenetics. He had no idea what was going on inside living cells. If Darwin were alive today and he could see that video on the molecular machines that I showed you, uh, or pointed you to, he will probably not believe be an evolutionist. Darwin would probably not be a Darwinist, all right? Um, and so they need to understand that what they think is random mutation in time is actually made by the creator who uploaded a lot of genetic code into these organisms and gave them the ability to turn certain sections of code on and off depending on what is needed uh, for the environment. Uh, the scientific method debunks the symbiogenesis hypothesis, right? This is the belief that one bacteria swallowed another bacteria and it became a more complex cell. But when, you know, the scientific method is not just about hypotheses. It's about actually seeing, testing it and seeing can this actually happen, right? Um, and when they actually try to test it, uh, here's a great article that shows that, you know, it, it can. And actually it proves what they don't want to prove, which is that a, cre a an intelligent being is necessary. And not even uh, our intelligence, but something that is way more intelligent than us. An intelligent being way more intelligent than us is necessary to make that happen. Uh, we need to clarify the difference between evidence for a general creator uh, versus evidence for a specific creator. Many times I'll present something uh, to, to an atheist and they'll say, well, that doesn't prove you're God. Well, that I'm not trying to. And so a lot of times it's good to start out by saying, hey, I, I've got, this is evidence for a general creator. This is not evidence that Jesus is our creator or that the God of Islam is the right God. This is just showing that an intelligent being was necessary for this to come into existence. Uh, it's a more logical stance to believe in a general creator, <coughs> excuse me, and not know the specifics uh, than to be an atheist or agnostic. You know, I, 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 and I make that known, like, hey, I, I, I think you're not being honest with yourself. And if you were honest with yourself, you would not be an atheist or an agnostic. If you don't believe in Christianity or Islam or any other religion because you don't see the evidence for that, um, I understand that. Uh, I'll try to tell you the evidence on why I believe Jesus is our creator. But if but I'm not going to respect your position that there is no creator. I think you're, you're not being honest with the evidence. Uh, Carl Sagan. So Carl Sagan, many atheists um, admire him. And uh, there's two things that really fascinated me uh, while uh, looking into his work. One is he's got this great video on the fourth dimension where he explains a higher dimensional being interacting with a lower dimensional being. And, you know, the Bible doesn't say the words dimension, but, you know, it says that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And God could be said to be a, a hyper dimensional extraterrestrial. So God is this being that is outside of our three spatial dimensions. And it's amazing how he interact, how Carl Sagan describes this interaction is very similar to, um, you know, what we see in the Bible when God lets people see a glimpse of heaven or a glimpse of angels and they look really weird how, how they d describe it. So uh, another thing is that he was involved in the movie Contact. He wrote the book, I believe, Contact. And he was involved in the movie. Well, the end of the movie is fascinating because Jodie Foster's character interacts. She goes, she travels through, um, you know, a wormhole. So she, a, a hyperdimensional travel to meet with an extraterrestrial. And she has this experience and nobody else saw it. Nobody else experienced it. And she can't convince them. And so I think that's, that's just really good to show them that, hey, this is written in our hearts that, there are, um, that even in Carl Sagan's heart and even these people that probably don't believe in a God, they came up with this story where a woman had an, an interaction with a 
an alien and the alien presented himself in the form that she could understand her father. And it's like, man, that's exactly what God did for us. He, he, he's a hyperdimensional extraterrestrial. He's not from our world and he, he interacts with us. Uh, he did so through Jesus. He became in human form that we could understand, of course, to die for us. But even now, you know, by reading the Bible, Jesus said that his sheep hear his voice. And uh, by me reading the New Testament, man, I'm interacting with this creator and he's speaking to me through the Bible. And I know that's my experience and I can't, um, you know, that that's not evidence that I can use to force you to believe it. But I just want you to know that that idea is also present in people who don't believe uh, this private interaction that cannot be proven. And that's what I experience and millions of Christians experience as we pray and as we spend time with God's word and as we spend time with other Christians and God speaks through them. Uh, the next thing is that, and, and I love this point, that there is an, an over skepticism. So somebody can be so skeptical that they miss out on something good. Um, and now we're switching to with the last point and this point, we're really switching to evidence for a general creator and why it's more logical. I can prove to you that we have a creator. I can't prove to you that Jesus is our creator until he comes back. Um, but if you wait for that to happen and you ignore things that point to it, you're going to miss out. And so it is with investing and marriage, right? If, if I, if I use the same skepticism that some people use toward a creator, toward investing in marriage, I'll never invest and I'll never get married, right? I'm not going to say, Hey, I'm going to wait till, uh, this, this stock skyrockets before I invest in it. Cause that way I know that's the evidence I need. Well, then you missed out. And same with marriage. Uh, I love my wife. I am so thankful for her. Uh, if I would have just waited until she lived her whole life to make sure she was faithful to one man to marry her, well, then I missed out, right? I had to, based on the information I know about her, make the gamble, the reason faith that she will be a great uh, spouse and that she's not going to cheat on me or leave me. So it is with uh, picking a specific creator. It is with picking Jesus. You've got to just look at the evidence you do have and uh, you can't expect absolute truth. I mean, proof, but man, you get a ton. When you spend time with God and you interact with him and you obey him and he confirms things, it's, it's, it's really good. Uh, so the next thing is listen to scientists with opposing views on abiogenesis, Darwinian evolution, a global flood in the age of the universe. And see who has the most convincing evidence. So, I mean, kind of a summary of all of this before I get into other things is that, you know, I believe in a creator because I listen to scientists who do and scientists who don't. And the scientists who do have the evidence uh, regarding Darwinian evolution. Same thing. The scientist who, who said Darwinian evolution doesn't make sense. It can't happen. They had the evidence on their side. Same with global flood. Uh, same with the age of the universe. If the Bible's true and it can be taken, uh, Genesis 1 can be taken with a simple reading. Um, there should be evidence for an old universe and young universe because God made some things with age. What do we see when we look at evidence? We, we see evidence for an old universe and a young universe. And so I just encourage you to listen to both, both sides and see who has the most evidence. Uh, regarding the age of the universe, I really like the documentary uh, Is Genesis History and their ministry and, and all the scientists they can expose you to. Um, <clears throat> listen to people claim that the Biblical prophecy adds validity to the Bible. So there's, that's not my expertise, but I've been blessed by people who it is that they look at prophecies in the Bible and they say, well, you know, this was before Alexander the Great. It was about him and it accurately uh, prophesied what would happen with Alexander the Great. And of course, somebody could just write that off by saying that, well, that was written after Alexander the Great. But I think if you look at it, you'll see that there's evidence that it was written beforehand. And so there's more prophecy than that. Um, and then the next thing, and there's, and there's some I'm not going to mention. And all that, you know, I think God made it so that anyone can get, anyone can leave him if they want to, right? That's what the, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was about is uh, Adam and Eve could leave him if they wanted to, and they could leave paradise if they wanted to. And so all these things, uh, as we get to the specifics of you know, Jesus being our creator and the Bible being true, uh, God's not going to twist your arm. He's going to make it so that if you want to convince yourself that this isn't enough evidence, then you can do so. Um, the next thing along with that is the, the sanitation laws in the Old Testament are good. They, these, these were good laws of God teaching the Israelites how to avoid germs, even though germs weren't discovered in the 1670s. So I encourage you to look into that too. Uh, you know, a lot of people have problems with what they call you know, Bible contradictions or, um, you know, things in the Bible that are very harsh. But please understand that 
there's no Bible contradiction or harsh thing that's, that seems harsh in the Bible that hasn't already been discovered by intelligent, caring Christians. And man, I love it. Atheists build my faith by pointing these things out because they, they point me to scripture that maybe I overlooked. And then I get to go on a great treasure hunt. And I, I look, you know, what if, what is, what have other Christians said about this? How does this compare with other Bible uh, verses? Because the great, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. And it actually builds my faith and helps me understand God at a deeper level. And just understand that in John chapter 6, uh, Jesus let people misunderstand him when he was talking about um, communion. He let people think that they actually had to eat his flesh and drink his blood, um, but it was symbolism of something that was uh, more important of what he was going to do on the cross. And so it's that way with us. The Bible is written to test us. It's written to um, make it so that we can be offended and leave. But I recommend not being offended and leave. I recommend saying what Peter said. You know, you've got the... You, I can't remember it precisely. Forgive me for that. But, but, but that Jesus has all the answers. Why would I go anywhere else. So I highly recommend you look at that. Um, now in closing, I, I think the best resources for helping fight atheism are, um, the secular sources of scientifically accurate animations that debunk that chemicals could become life without a create, creator. My two favorite people to point atheists to are Dr. James Tor and Dr. Rob Stadler. And then I really like, um, the Institute for Creation Research, and I really like um, is Genesis history. And I think if you 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 just keep feeding yourself these things, and then of course you've got to know the Bible yourself. You've got to get close to Jesus. Uh, Jesus said that if you obey me, um, if you love me, you'll obey me, and I'll make myself known to you. So again, you've you've got to have this interaction with Jesus. That yeah, you can't you can't make somebody else believe that you're interacting with Jesus, but man, it strengthens your faith um, by Him walking with you and teaching you through the Bible and answering your prayers. So that is so important and. Um, I recommend you do all that. So, so study, get to those resources. And even if you don't like those resources, you can recommend them to people like, Hey, I don't understand what James Torres is saying. You can say that. Um, but I recommend, I believe you can understand it. And I, I just want you to, to hear what he has to say that, that, you know, his idea is that there is no way that chemicals can become life without a creator. So anyway, uh, comment, let me know what you think. I'm going to try to present this to some groups of church staff to help them, but uh, together we can make it more difficult for people to be atheist, and we can make it, um, uh, we can help convince people to just see for themselves, read the New Testament for yourself. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and for them to see if, you know, Jesus will, will talk to them through, through them hearing what he has to say. Thank you.